everybody, it's Eugene here and welcome to another Click 3D video. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is getting into Cloud Compare and looking at the editing tools. Now, whenever I get a scan, uh, regardless of where it's from, if it's from a terrestrial laser scanner, if it's a photogrammetry scan or something like that, I often have to edit the data somehow. Either I want to crop it or I want to get rid of some extraneous data or something like that. So Cloud Compare is really great for this. It's really quick and simple. And so what I wanted to do today is run through a couple of examples. One, of a vehicle that's outside and let's say I want to crop all of the ground and get rid of all that stuff and just leave the vehicle itself that would be one the second thing is would be let's say I had a small room or some kind of indoor environment where maybe I have part of a ceiling or I have a wall or something like that and then I want to crop that out because I want to be able to look straight down into it um, you know just for whatever reason maybe I want to make a drawing of it or I just want you know, I don't want the ceiling in the way when I'm looking down into the scan. So I'm going to show you how I typically do that. It's pretty quick and simple, so it shouldn't be that long of a video. And I am going to start by getting in here and loading a scan. Okay, so I've got this uh, steamroller here and you can see uh, that it's, you know, there's some other stuff around here. There's the ground. And so uh, usually what I do when I get into something like this is I look at it in the top down view. So I go over here and I just look at the presets and you can see that this one is somewhat um, level or straight up and down on my screen, but maybe I don't want to have it oriented that way. Maybe I want to orient it another way. So if you look down here, you'll see that the, uh, you know, X and Y axes are this way. Maybe I want it uh, the other way. And so often what I will do is if I'm working with a scan is I'll rotate it 90 degrees. So it's nice and square in my screen because I'm going to use the real estate of my screen this way, lengthwise, uh, side to side, because I've got, I can fit more data that way than putting it up and down. Obviously, if I scroll in here, right, I'm going to be at a limit, um, because of the length of this thing. So that's one thing that I would do. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to isolate just the vehicle and I want to get rid of the ground, all of the ground. I just want to quick and dirty, get rid of it. So let's do a couple things. Let's orient the scan the way I want first. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll edit the data. So from a top down view here, one of the things that I typically do is I change the perspective or the viewing perspective. So by doing that, I click on this little button here to set current view mode. So I'll click on that and go to orthographic projection. Now, the difference between orthographic and perspective is that when you're in perspective mode, you see the way people normally see, which is things that are closer to you appear larger and things which are farther away get smaller. And so you'll see that if I'm looking at it right now, this is an orthographic view. So everything is pretty much flat and squared. So if I switch that now and I go back to the uh, object centered perspective, you'll see that the uh, the roof of this steamroller got larger and I can't really see the things uh, just underneath it. So I'm going to switch that back, go to orthographic. You see everything just kind of changed view again. So in order to make this uh, sort of rotated in the screen, we're going to be actually translating it by rotation. I'm going to click on the scan here and I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to call this steamroller. Okay, great. And, uh, let me just change that again, steam roller. And you have to have the scan selected here. And I'm going to click on this tool right here. This is the, uh, the translate rotate tool. Click on that and a little window pops up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the Z axis so you can limit the rotation in all of the axis. Okay. So if I have X, Y, and Z and I start rotating now, so if I take my left mouse button and I start rotating, it looks like I'm changing the view, but I'm not. The camera is stationary and I'm actually rotating this scan all the way around in 3D space. So, um, it's going to be completely messed up. In fact, if I keep this one and I go to, well, let me put a the pause button here. If I now go to the front view, you'll see that it looks like a mess. And if I go to the top down view, you'll see that it's also a mess. It's completely disoriented from where I had it initially. So what I'm going to do here is start by reorienting this. And so I'm going to click on the scan that's here and make sure that that's activated. If I click off of it, you'll see a number of icons disappear, but I'm just going to click on it. And I'm going to go to this one right here. This is the translate rotate and it has XYZ, um, XYZ, or you can see the individual X, Y, and Z 
uh, axis. So I just want to rotate around the Z axis right now. So I'm just going to select Z. And if I left click right now, you see that I'm locked in. I can only rotate in this one direction. I can't, if I move this any other way, it just doesn't rotate. So I'm going to square this off in my view like this. And that's it. That's all I need to do. I'm just choosing to rotate. Now, the right mouse button will control the X, the Y, and the Z, but I'm going to leave it where it is. I don't want it. I don't want this to translate anywhere. I don't need it to translate anywhere, but I could if I wanted to move this to a specific position. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to hit the check mark and that's it. We've already translated this. And now if I rotate this around the view, you'll see that I'm in the orthographic view. Let me go to back to perspective. Okay. And if I go to the top down view, by default, now it's squared this way. And that's what I wanted. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is some editing. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the orthographic view. I find that this is helpful when you're making edits. And what we're going to be doing is cropping out all this other extraneous data that's around it. So I need to make sure that the scan is highlighted here and we're going to choose this other button, which is the scissors, the segment tool. Click on that and you'll see that I have another menu that pops up. So by default, as soon as it comes up, these settings here, you're set to uh, uh, polyline selection. So what I do is with the left mouse button, I'm just going to click. I'm just going to start clicking and making a selection around the object that I need. And I'm not being too picky here. I'm just going to get around most of it. And I just don't want to crop any of the uh, steamroller. So once I get to like the last position, I'll right click. And that's my selection there. Okay, so what I can do is I can segment in or I can segment out. And it doesn't matter if you make a mistake here. So if I segment in, okay, I took the segment and I keep everything that's inside of my selection. And if everything outside of that is garbage, I can just hit the delete button. But if you're not sure, okay, remember Cloud Compare doesn't have an undo button. What you do is you hit the check mark. And if you keep the check mark, it'll keep both pieces separated. So let me do that. Um, just be careful because the check mark is right beside the delete button. And sometimes, uh, you know, you can miss that. So this is it. I've got two components right now. I've got the steamroller. And I've got the ground and you'll see here if I uncheck this or if I uncheck this, I've got two components here. So I've got the overall, I uncheck that. So that's what I'm selecting right now. I'm selecting the ground plane. That's what's visible. And if I don't need this, I can just delete it. So I'm just going to hit the delete key. Okay. I'm not going to work with it right now. Okay. So you can see the, the, tra the steamroller here. So let me go back to perspective and there you go. So now what I want to do is clean up some of this data that's on the bottom. And for this, I definitely want to be in orthographic mode again. So I'm going to go back go to orthographic mode. I'll go to the front uh, or side, whatever, uh, however this ends up. And of course I rotated this. And what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to start to delete this data that's visible to me here in the center. And I'm going to get as close to the uh, the wheels and the roller as I can without deleting the actual roller itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the view from here and I'll try to do the same thing here. And some, sometimes it means that I got to manipulate this around, try to get underneath here. And little by little, you'll see that I'll start to remove a number of pieces. So let's, let me start with this one here. So what I'm going to do here is make sure this is selected. And I'm going to go to the little scissors, a segment tool. And by default, I'm going to start selecting again, left mouse button, click, 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 click. And I'm going to right mouse button to stop. And then what's inside I want gone. So that means that I have to choose this one right here. It's segment out. And then that disappears. Okay. So you'll see here, it says segmentation pause right now. So I can just right mouse button and I can scroll and or excuse me i can pan and i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to hit the i'm going to hit the space bar because that's the default for the or i can click this button up here to unpause and now i'm back in selection mode again and i'm just going to start clicking clicking and i'll try to get rid of this stuff down here and now i'm going to right click again stop the selection and hit out i'm paused again i'm going to move over and i just keep repeating this space bar to unpause make the selection and then segment out so that's what i've got here now i'm paused now so let me rotate and you see that i've got this portion here so i'm just going to go unpause and i'm just going to click around the tire um, after a while you'll get pretty quick with this and i'm going to segment out and just keep doing this. Of course, it's, it is tedious work. Like sometimes if you really want to make this, um, 
very, very clean. You know, you're going to have to zoom in really close and take your time. I'm doing this kind of quick, but you'll get the idea. And you'll see that the part that's over here at the bottom is difficult to see, but the sides shouldn't be too bad here. And I can kind of see where there's a delineation between the actual roller and the ground. So I'm just clicking, 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 make the selection segment out. It pauses automatically. So I just scroll to the next one and just keep, uh, you know, rinse and repeat kind of thing. So let me finish this one. Good. And segment out. Okay. So now that you've done that on the outside, typically what I'll do is I'll try to clean up what is under here at the front and at the back. So I'll zoom in this way and let me see, I can see part of the rollers here. So I don't want to take that too much out, but I will take this and maybe go down here where I didn't have anything and clean that out. So yeah, it's close enough. There's a little bit of data there that I think I could probably clean up. Like there's a little piece back here, right? And again, this is getting really particular. So we'll just crop that out like that. All right, good. And again, I could probably keep going and going. This little piece back here, uh, you can see that I've got some stuff underneath here. So I'm going to unpause, just click around the tires. I don't want to hit the tires and so forth and so on. So anyway, just not to keep or to keep this video short, uh, I'm not going to do much more, but you get the idea. You just keep going, going and going. And then once you've got everything out that you need, I'm going to go back to object uh, centered perspective. What I'm going to do is just delete everything. So I don't really need to keep it. Last time I hit the checkbox, I'm just going to hit delete and that finishes the operation. And now you can see that I've got this steamroller that's fairly cleaned up. And that's typically what I do when I'm cleaning up a vehicle or something that's outdoors that I just want to isolate. It takes a little bit of work. It's manual. You know, there's not a lot of automated tools that cleans it up, um, you know, perfectly the way you want. There are some ways you can like filter and do some different things, but I always find that there's always something left over. You got to go in and manually edit anyway. So if you have to manually edit, I'll just do it this way. It doesn't take a whole heck of a lot long. So, all right, let's leave this one alone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on another example, which is an indoor uh, scan. Okay. So I've just imported another scan. This is from, again, Recon 3D. It's the iPhone app. And you can see that I've got part of the ceiling that's here around. And let's say, for example, in this case, I may want to look down at this uh, mock crime scene. And, you know, I don't want the... Uh, the ceiling sort of uh, occluding what it is that I want to see or so maybe I want to just crop it off or something like that. So in this case, let's do the same thing that we did before. Let's uh, sort of orient the, the scan. And then what we'll do is we'll just crop off the ceiling. This is something that I do quite often. So if I go to the top down view, You'll see that in this case, unlike the steamroller before, that the scan is now oriented off on an angle. And the room is not really rectangular. I mean, it's got a weird shape to it. So I may just pick one side and square it off in my view. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to go to the orthographic view and you'll see what happens. Uh, this uh, rooms are a good way to look at the, uh, look at the perspective mode. So at the perspective mode, you can kind of see part of the top and part of the bottom. And then if you go to orthographic, you, the walls become like really crisp here, right on the edges. So we're going to start here. I'm going to make sure that it's selected. The scan is selected. And what I'm going to do is go to the translate rotate. I'm going to go back to make sure that I'm only going to rotate about the Z axis. And then I just use the left mouse button. I'm going to rotate this like this. And this is just manual. It's not really precise to any specific coordinate um, or anything like that, but it just squares it off in the image to sort of maximize the real estate in my screen. So I'm going to say, yeah, that's good for me. And there you go. We got this. Now, in this case, what I want to do is I want to crop the ceiling and we can do that really, really simply without a lot of effort. So I'm going to go to a front view like that. And remember, I'm in orthographic view. This is harder to do if you are in object centered perspective. If I go like that, you'll see what I mean. See, it's kind of like it's hard to pick just the top here because it's bending. All right. You get these perspective lines that are that are bending. So and in fact, if you look at the box here, that the bounding box that's around this scan, you'll see that the part that's closest to me is much wider than the part that is behind me. So um, go back to the orthographic view and make sure that I'm squared up here in one of the default views. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box around the top and I'm going to just pull it all, pull it all off. So what I, I have the uh, scene selected here and I'm just going to click on the scissors, the segment tool. Now, 
before what I did was I was just left clicking, left clicking, left clicking, you know, and making a selection, which is fine. But maybe in this case, because this is, you know, this is an architectural structure or something that's very square, what I want to do is make a rectangular selection. So I was using the uh, polygon selection tool. So what I'm going to do is go to the drop down and use the rectangular selection. And this guarantees that I make a perfectly square selection. Uh, it's not that hard to do if you were using the polygon selection, but if I just click and drag right here, let's say I'm going to take off a piece of the ceiling, maybe up to here something like that. Uh, maybe go a little bit lower. I'll go a little bit lower. So basically all of this that's inside of the rectangle, I want out. So the selection that's inside, I want to segment out. So I'm going to go out and then you'll see here that I've got it all removed. So I'm going to go ahead and just say delete everything that isn't visible here. Boom. Done. Switch back to the object centered perspective and you can see that I've cleared off the ceiling really, really quick. So that's all I wanted to convey. I know there's a lot of people that do editing with these types of things and, uh, you know, different scans, you want to get them cleaned up, but, uh, you know, there's a few little other tricks you can do with the editing tools, but that's the basics of what I typically do when I'm cleaning up a scan really quick, uh, really efficient. And then all you have to do from here, if you want to save it again, is you click on save in cloud compare and you have a choice of a whole bunch of different formats at the bottom here. So you, you know, you can do whatever it is that you want. Okay, that does it for this particular video. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.